Greetings all. Well, I really, I just can't think of why I've never talked about divining for water before. That seems odd that it never crossed my mind to discuss this since gardeners, farmers, everybody needs water, right? Water is really, really, really important. Well, since it's, uh, you know, coming on the Halloween season, eh, we tend to talk about odd things that a lot of people don't believe in, you know, like vampires and ghosts and stuff during Halloween. Now, divining for water is kind of on the edge of all of that, but, you know, a lot of people would bag that with paranormal. I do not bag it with paranormal, okay? Um, to me, it is a pure, straight, physical situation. Um, now, when it comes to divining for water, many different people will use many different means to do it. Yeah, I've seen people who hold a, hold a carpenter saw, okay, and the saw will bend when it finds water. Um, I've seen people who will use a willow branch. Uh, the forked willow stick is typical. You hold it in both hands, one point straight out. Now, willow's a water tree, okay? So, in other words, it grows where the water's at, so that's why they figure that it will work to find water. Um, now, most of us use metal. Uh, metal rods is typical. Um, and where I learned to do this in northern Wisconsin, water witching, as it's called there, they don't call it dividing. They're, the people who do this are called water witches. Um, there, most people tend to use metal rods, and they're usually bent at 90 degree angles, like these right here, okay? Um, these are coat hanger. Coat hanger is typical. I've used brazing rod, you know, the brass and the brazing rod. Maybe it's more conductive. I don't know. But uh, it seems that almost any sort of a metal will work. Uh, I guess I have personally tried brass and steel. They both work for this. Uh, the rods would then be held uh, lightly in the hands. You have to just put them in there so that these rods are floating in your palm. And as you walk with them, and if you approach an object that is either water or metal or has a current flow. For instance, this morning I detected the hard drive in my laptop with these. <laughs> yeah, I was sending off a tremendous amount of energy. Um, anyway, so yeah, the rods are held so they're almost floating in the hand, just as lightly as you can hang on to this thing. Okay, and. Uh, then as you walk, you walk slowly, carefully approaching areas. What will happen is the rods will begin to close on each other. And as the rods close on each other, you are over the top of something. All right. As you move away from it, the rods will slowly open back up again and you have moved away. Now, there's a water line buried just ahead of me over here. We should be able to detect it. Now, I'm standing directly over the line at this point and the rods have closed to each other. Now I'm going to back up As I move out of the field, the rods let loose. There's no pressure on them again. And as I approach the line, the rods tend to <coughs> vibrate in the hand. There's a, I don't know how to explain it, but you can feel something as a pull. And it relaxes as you move away. they just fall. Now, the way I see it, <laughs> okay, that 
this is science, but it's just not science that's known. That's all. It's, uh, there's nothing mystical about being able to detect uh, the presence of buried objects and, uh, and water and so on with the human body. Uh, water in the soil, especially moving water, creates a field that has energy. There's current. It's creating, actually, an, a field of energy around itself. The human body is a field of energy. Um, you know, metal is conductive. Uh, the way I see it, when the field of the human body moves through a field that's produced by something in the earth, the two interact. That's an interaction between the two fields, and that's somehow what causes these to move. Uh, how that happens is beyond me. I don't know. No one knows, I don't think. Uh, that's why it's not science. It's because no one can explain how it works. Uh, but it does. Uh, for instance, uh, different areas of the country um, treat divining in different ways. Uh, you get into places where water is scarce, uh, and then again in other places where groundwater is abundant, you'll find a lot of water witches. Yeah, like, uh, you know, northern Wisconsin, for instance, the glaciers left us with so much fossil water. Oh, man. And there were seams of sand and gravel and things like that left from the glacial deposits that the water would run through. And it would be impounded, say, between layers of clay where it couldn't escape, but it would be moving downhill. Well, it's... Uh, you walk through the field that's produced by that water holding rods if you are the conductive sort of human uh, you'll get an effect and you'll be able to see that there is something there um, again where I lived in northern Wisconsin um, for years there again people are called water witches not diviners and it is a commonly accepted fact no one goes looking for anything under the ground without calling in a water witch it's just they just do it you know uh, you know as opposed to that idea you know when i lived in uh, california and i was in charge of running a nursery in the bay area and we had an underground water pipe leak and so i was trying to find it and i went in early early one morning before there was anybody else around to see me do this and i got a set of rods and i started walking the nursery looking for the leak well <laughs> my boss who was part company owner showed up unannounced while I was doing this and said Bill what the hell are you doing I said oh I'm looking for a water leak George he goes with coat hangers I go yeah I wish water <laughs> he just walked away on the reverse of that I worked for a wood window and door manufacturer for many years in northern Wisconsin in the maintenance department. I was, for the most part, a mechanic on forklifts, but also a welder and did a few other things for him. But uh, we would periodically have to go out and figure out what was in the landscape around the plant because we were going to, say, dig a foundation. We're going to change some things. And so anytime we decided we were going to trench, the head of the maintenance department would uh, call in the water witches. Yeah, and so in the maintenance shop alone, we had three of me and Mickey Lasser, and there was uh, uh, Krings, Nubby, Nubby Krings. Yeah, all three of us could witch water. Lazar was in an entire family of water witches, and it was one of Lazar's brothers that taught me. Yeah, everybody in the Lazar family divined water. Um, yeah, and so here we have a situation where yeah, at the window shop when we had to go do some digging, well, we get the water witches to go out, and, and me and Nubby and, and, and Lazar would have to agree. Yeah, we'd walk and, and, and compare notes, and when uh, we found that our rods were agreeing, we'd go back and tell Bobbles and the maintenance foreman, there's a line buried right here, and it's running from here to there, you know, don't dig on top of that, blah, blah. And, uh, and guess what? Hmm. We were always right, or at least we were never wrong. How's that? Yeah, never once after we witched the site did anybody ever dig into a water line. 
I have a, a few associates over the years who were deeply into paranormal stuff. On the other hand, uh, <clears throat> I probably had more scientists as fishing buddies uh, myself. I don't know why that is, but that just seems to be the way life has been for me. Uh, yeah, one of my uh, good fishing pals who uh, happened to have a, 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 a summer home in northern Wisconsin near where I live, uh, Big Wally. Big Wally was in charge of uh, um, the EPA's Midwestern Emergency Underwater Action Committee. Wally was a highly skilled professional diver. He actually was my dive instructor. It is where he taught me to scuba. Um, but anyway, Wally was a, a lake knowledgeist and a, uh, a lake scientist and a groundwater scientist. Um, he worked for the EPA. Uh, he was the head of the Underwater Emergency Action Committee uh, in, the, in the Midwest. If they had toxic barrels in the Mississippi, Wally would be the first one on the site to dive it. Yeah, he was. Uh, anyway, so that's the kind of guy Wally was. And I remember one time we were having a party at my house. Oh, a whole bunch of different people around from all over the place. And I decided, well, since I had so many people around, I wanted to try an experiment with divining rods. And so I made a set of divining rods and then I took everybody at the party who wanted to and I set them out over a course that I had already pre-divined and I knew what was underneath the surface there. Well, it turned out that 70% of the people at that party who had never witched water could divine. Yeah, they didn't know they could do it, <laughs> but 70% of those folks were water witches. Another 30% of them were complete duds. It was like they were completely insulated or something. Fields around them seemed to have no effect uh, on themselves or the rods. Um, so it's, you know, it's just about a 70-30 thing with people, I guess. But uh, well, it turned out Big Wally, Wally was good at it. Yeah, <laughs> Wally divided the course perfectly. And I'm going, okay, Wally, what do you think now? He goes, can't prove it, not scientific. I go, yeah, but you just did it, and the rods are reacting exactly the same way they reacted for me. Oh, I don't know, but I have no explanation, he tell me. Yeah, he would never agree with me that there was anything to water witching, yet he could witch for water. Uh, it's a very unusual situation, uh, you know, truly. Really, uh, most of us never think of the world as being full of energy fields surrounding us, but yet it is. Even more of them now that we have, you know, Wi-Fi and cell phones and all this stuff. There's energy flowing everywhere. There you have it on divining. I am so surprised that I never even mentioned that. And so if you know, anybody out there who's looking for water, you know, give it a try. It's pretty interesting. Um, at one time, I know my uh, stepfather had gone ahead and on the old family farm had developed a site where he had uh, had a well put in and had a septic field put in, you know, and all this, and then turned around and uh, ran brand new fresh sod over the top of it. All you could see was the sea of green. And so we were talking about divining and I took a set of rods and I actually walked out there and I walked his water lines, every pipe in the septic field, etc, etc. And since Ed knew exactly where they were, he had to concur. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're right. That's where the pipes are at. Well, there you go. It's not exactly paranormal, but it's kind of odd science, boy. Aloha. Hey, y'all. Hang loose.